Hey everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Now, most of you will know over the last couple of days I ran a vote. Now that vote hasn't actually ended at this point. Um, it's it, I said 48 hours, it's got till about 6, 7 o'clock tonight. It's currently 11, so it's got about another sort of 7 hours. But let's be honest, at this point we have neck and neck between UE5 one point uh, UE five point one and Pokemon slash Temtem clone uh, and it's neck and neck with thirty one votes thirty one of you took place in the vote and we are neck and neck for both of those um, so I know it hasn't technically finished yet and it really doesn't matter which one wins at this point I think my best option is to upgrade to five point one. And we will work on our own sort of capture monster game. I've been working on it for a little while, to be perfectly honest with you. And I've kind of been excited to do it. That's why it's been in both polls so far. Um, now, don't get me wrong. As I said in the last video, if you still want me to cover some Haven stuff, please let me know what you want me to cover. And I will still cover that. And any other subscriber requests you've got, please just chuck them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to take a look at them and see what I can do. Um, and also, don't forget to put that stuff in the Discord too, because um, I'm always in there helping people out as well. So um, just bear that in mind. First thing we've got to do is upgrade to 5.1. So let's go to our library. Let's get our new engine version, and let's install it. Uh, that's fine with me, whatever that means. Let's go with that. Yep, sure, let's do that. And now we wait. This probably is going to take a little while. So I will see you when it's all said and done. One hour later. Okay. So now we've done that. We've installed the new engine. We can start a new project. So let's go. Let's get to it. Six and a half hours later. Okay. This is taking way longer than <laughs> I thought it would. <laughs> 15 minutes later. Okay, so now that we have um, 5.1 installed, the prerequisites are now done as well. We can set up our project file. Um, now we're also going to be creating a game. Uh, it's going to be third person. But this is going to be true third person, unlike our Haven project. Um, it's going to be Blueprint. It's going to be desktop. It's going to be maximum qualities. We're going to have the star things. We'll, we'll enable ray tracing. Why not? And we're going to call this... Um, we'll call it Capture Creatures because I haven't actually got an official name um, that I've thought about, but um, I do kind of understand how I want to have all the mechanics. I'm going to find a new location, which we'll probably just select this one, to be honest. The, the D file, which is my hard drive. Capture Creatures. Uh, and then the rest, I think, is pretty good. We'll, we'll go with that. So now I'm going to create the project, and I, I'm not going to lie, this is probably going to take a long time. One eternity later. So, we are finally back after um, waiting for our engine to install, our prerequisites to install, and then for our new project to finally open. So, I don't want to spend too much time on this but we're just going to look a little bit into the the 5.1 changes uh the most notable being our third person character uh, and then we'll also get our um camera setup so first things first the new enhanced input action mappings i'm just going to quickly go through an ex a brief explanation as to what i found out about each of these now First things first, the event begin play. It now casts to the player controller, um, which obviously drives these add mapping context values, which is coming from something we'll show you in a minute. Um, but I'm not entirely sure whether they're calling this cast to player controller. If anyone knows, please let me know, uh, because I've tried to find this player controller that they're calling, and I, I have no idea. I found one thing in the engine content, but I'm not even sure if that's what it is. But let me know in the Discord if you know. Uh, and then we have 
so this runs this you need this to ensure that these input actions work and this is calling to something called the IMC default which we'll look at in a moment um, but if you want to set up these new input enhanced input actions and you're like oh I don't understand what all this means basically the main things I think we need to know at this point is triggered will run this every time that button is held down push so it's kind of like a held down trigger something that really has been kind of needed I think to help uh, uh, to help simplify code uh, especially when it comes to blueprints um, so for example if I move the camera it's always going to move it's always going to work out and check it out whatever I need to do same for running around in any direction it's, it's constantly working that out because it's constantly triggering that um, that input action. Uh, whereas if you have started and completed, now those are Unreal Engine love to complicate some of their wording for things. They like to be fancy. I get it. I understand it. I, I don't blame them. But I think... Um, what uh, what they meant by started and completed was pressed and unpressed or released you know so when you press something is the greatest um, example is the jump so when you press your key down it will jump and when it's finished it will stop jumping so let's have a look at that we jump and it goes down we jump it goes down and that's because it's we press it it goes up and when that's finished, it's finished doing that jump, it comes down. It stops jumping, right? Uh, so it's kind of like pressed and released. Uh, ongoing and cancelled, I'm still looking at, but that's that I will cover as soon as I know what the hell it is. <laughs> um, so we have this IMC default. Let's let's actually go through the, the, um, the, the context folder. So this is our main menu. We have our third person set up the blueprints all in there but we have an input section and we have our IMC default which I already have open and if you go into actions that you have these new action BPs if you go down to input you can create one just here I've already done one with crouch so I won't do it again but that's where you get it from and you can also create your own uh, uh, IMC in their input mapping context in there as well not that it's needed because it comes with one unless you're cre creating one for something different I don't know but um, Typically, you already got one, so you don't you shouldn't need it theoretically. When you open up your new input action, you'll be met with a few different things here. Now, we always want the consume input to be done. Trigger when pause and reserve or mappings are cover. When I know well, I've done a bit more research on them, but let's have a look at the value type. Um, you can have a digital bool, uh, which provides a boolean you can use to drive things happening. Um, we also have uh, three accesses, which means we can expose them a bit like on here. You have your action X, Y, and Y. You can expose them differently, which is really, really useful, especially for things like the Resident Evil where we did the turning in place. Uh, that would have been really useful to have those split. Um, um, and yeah, and you can set those to be whatever you want. And then you come in here, and just like in the project settings, you can then create a mapping and set it up to be the trigger you want or you know like C for example for me um, and if you've no, if you noticed actually in the action uh, input mapping I do that every episode uh, you have these like triggers and modifiers you can call or well, the triggers are they work like um, they work like sort of extra ways to do things so like for example hold so if I hold the trigger down, it'll do something. So that would be perfect for things like um, Call of Duty when you aim down sight. Um, you've got like something that happens when only when you release the trigger. You've got pulse press. You know all these different sort of triggers you can call, and you can set these up in here as well. If we go back to here now, I obviously created one called Crouch. So uh, I A underscore Crouch. We want the enhanced action event. We can now start setting this up because this is being called for here. If obviously I didn't have this set up to the IMC default, I'd have to call this as well. But we're setting that up in the IMC, so it's fine. It's all it's all being controlled through that. 
Uh, now with this boolean we can actually use this so when we set things like sprinting to true or crouching to true we can actually do this through here now I've already created um, a boolean uh, to, so we can set that um, while I'm here I'm, I'm not going to do the animations because that would take up time um, but if I set the max walk speed uh, like so we can have it so that when I start pressing it, it will go down to 150. But when I have completed what I want to do, so I release it, I can set it to 300. And both of these can go straight into here. Now, normally we'd have to set this up twice and have it um, run as true and false. But because we're running it through here, we can actually drive that through this action value, which is really, really cool. I'm actually going to set up a print string so you can see that effect actually um, taking place. Um, and then we can plug that into there. And lo and behold, we should get the result we're looking for. So I've set mine up to C. So if I press C, if you look in the top left, you should see it say true. And I'm now walking incredibly slow. And if I release, it says false. So it set that Boolean back to false and I'm walking slightly faster, back at 300. And I press it again, I'm slowing down, it says true. And I release, it says false and I'm moving it. So it's being, that Boolean is being driven from the input itself. So I'm not having to set anything. The Boolean, uh, the input, uh, the enhanced input action is taking care of everything for me. I can just plug it in, plug all my exit nodes to it and it's doing it for me but why is that important well as you probably will remember when we come to do our anim bps we actually have to set a, a boolean in here to then drive that through to the anim bp so that we can set our animations up well actually with this it's doing the work for me instead of me setting it uh, manually it's doing all that work for me and then I can literally just plug it in into my NMBP and it will this will drive whether I crouch or not just from one set uh, boolean so I quite like that idea I think that's great it saves not much code but it saves you coding up like potentially 500 different booleans for a, a specific task you can literally just drive it straight through this input um, which is brilliant I think um, but yeah, so that's the crouch and that's kind of a, a brief look at inputs. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, again, as I said, if you trigger it, it will just run all the time um, when I'm pushing that button. It's like a hold down button. Now, I'm going to set up um, my character for our next project. I'm going to delete out the crouch because I don't need that. I also don't need anything to do with the camera and I also don't need jump. I just need that basic movement that we want out of this. Um, like so. <clears throat> Let's compile that. And then we just want to change our camera. Put it back a little bit. Let's bring it up a bit. And let's drop it down. I'd say to probably about minus 30 should be good. Let's... One, uh, I'd say about that is pretty good. And... With that, we should have everything set up exactly kind of how we want it. Uh, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. We can't jump anymore. We can't turn the camera. We just move around the world, left, right, forwards. Which is, as I say, exactly kind of how we want it. We want to set up to sort of um, um, one of the old school sort of po Pokemon slash Temtem clones. Okay, we, we don't, we're not going for like Scarlet and Violet or Arceus kind of level video game. We're going for the old school, the classics, you know. Um, great. Uh, so that's that setup. I think what we'll do, we've got a lot of setup for the this series, so there's quite a bit to kind of go over. Um, we're going to be covering more sort of. We'll be looking more sort of at a lot of um, sort of enumerators and um, let's have a look what will we be needing this series we're going to be covering a, a, a quite a bit of new stuff in a way 
because we're going to want things like um, where is it? We're going to be needing structures and enumerators for sure. We're also going to be doing a lot of widget work, um, and we're going to be setting up things like an inventory, and um, we need to set up a kind of technically. It's a lot of sort of background work, Pokemon. There's not a lot of. If I set up my controller, you wouldn't see a lot. You know, there's not actually a lot to show you. It's all sort of background stuff, um, and then it's like creating the creatures that are going to fight each other. So there's a lot of sort of um, particle effects that go into this sort of game. Uh, there's a lot of um, animation for the creatures, but that's all stuff we'll cover. If I, if I was to continue this, that stuff I'd have to probably get someone to do for me, like creating the creatures and sort of the animations out for me because I'm not, I am not adverse in that. I can create the game, do the code, um, but when it comes to like artist stuff, I'm no good. But we'll cover that uh, as we get to it. I will have some stuff made for this series so we can, um, we can see it come to life a bit. But um, I'll do... Um, I'll probably do a lot of setup in the next episode and then the third episode will be creating our world a bit and we'll go from there. But thank you so much guys for watching this. I hope you found this useful and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.